Hello everyone, I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about the lynching rampage of 1918, which included the horrible, bone-chilling, and heartbreaking lynching of Mary Turner and her unborn child. Now it's very sad what happened to them and very devastating. And with that being said, let's chat. Before we chat about the lynching rampage of 1918 and the lynching of Mary Turner, I must fill you all in on some very interesting information about the place or the location where all of this took place. Old Brooks County, Georgia. Now, Brooks County is a 494 square mile county created from portions of Lowndes and Thomas counties. Now, Brooks County, it was founded on December the 11th, 1858. And one of the most interesting things to me about Brooks County, outside of the massacre, of course, is how Brooks County earned its name or who was named after, rather. Now, Brooks County was named after Preston S. Brooks of South Carolina to honor his legacy. Now, Mr. Preston Brooks, he was elected to Congress as a state's rights Democrat in 1853, and he strongly supported slavery. He supported slavery so much so that on May the 22nd, 1856, he viciously beat abolitionist and Republican Senator Charles Sumner with a cane on the floor of the U.S. Senate. Now, he beat Sumner nearly half to death in retaliation for an anti-slavery speech. Now, Sumner, he was an abolitionist, so he was strongly against slavery. And it's a shame that he nearly lost his life for speaking out. But let's keep on going. Now, Sumner, he was beaten so bad that it took him three years to recover and resume his seat within the Senate. And as for Brooks, after he attacked Sumner, Everyone looked at Brooks like he was a very swell fella. I mean, he earned a national reputation and Brooks County was named after him after his death to honor his legacy. And Brooks, he died at the age of 38. Now, I figured that would be a little interesting fact to fill you all in on before we get into the story. But moving on along. Now, in 1918, after the Civil War and the Reconstruction period, racism and white supremacy was still thriving and growing within the South. Now, the black population was still oppressed and they pretty much still worked as slaves. Um, Many southern states, they contained plantations where many of the black population worked and most of them even lived there on the plantations. Now, the plantations, or the plantation in particular that we're going to discuss today, is the plantation that was owned by Hampton Smith. Now, Smith, he was known as a crooked and abusive man who gained his reputation by abusing and beating his workers. And he was also known for his crooked ways of bailing out the black people who had committed petty crimes and making them work. I'm sorry, making them work off their debt, rather, in his fields or on his plantation. And unfortunately and sadly, Mary Turner and her husband, Hazel Hayes Turner, they took jobs on Smith's plantation. And this would be the worst decision they could ever make. Now, Mary Turner, she was born Mary Hattie Graham in December of 1899. Now, her parents were Perry and Elizabeth Graham, and she had three siblings. And Mary, she married Hazel Hayes Turner on February the 11th, 1917 in Colquitt County, Georgia. And they were said to have had two children prior to their marriage, little O.C. Lee and Lester, according to the reports, of course. And Mary and Hayes, they moved their family to Brooks County, Georgia, and they accepted jobs on Smith's plantation. Now, remember earlier that we said that Smith, he was the plantation owner who, and he was very abusive and very crooked. And pretty much no one was off limits when it came to Smith and his abuse. 
I mean, there was even one incident where Smith even beat Mary. He beat Mary so bad that her husband, Hayes, he threatened Smith about that beating. And, of course, we know that Smith, he reported Hayes for threatening him. And nothing was done to Smith for beating Mary. But, of course, of course, Hayes, he was sentenced, he was sentenced I'm sorry, to time on a chain game by local authorities. Now, for those of you who don't know, this means that Hayes, he was pretty much chained to other prisoners and forced to work outside like a slave. I mean, y'all seen the prisoners chained together, digging a ditch in the blazing hot sun. I mean, that's pretty much what it means. But let's keep on going. Now, we can pretty much figure out that Smith ways were eventually going to catch up with them. And they did. I mean, on May the 16th of 1918, Smith, he beat a worker named Sidney Johnson for refusing to work. Now, Johnson, he refused to work because he said he was sick and he complained of being overworked. But Smith, he really didn't care and he beat Johnson anyway, according to the reports. And Johnson, he was working on Smith's plantation because he was trying to pay off some debt that he had got, you know, for some legal fees that he obtained from rolling some dice. So he was pretty much in debt to Smith as well. And now after Smith beat Johnson, Johnson shot and killed Smith, according to the reports. And this was the match that lit the fire under the white mob. Now, when the white community got wind of Smith's death, they began accusing the black farm workers who had been previously abused by Smith of conspiracy. And they began their lynching rampage throughout the county. Now, the manhunt, it lasted for about a week and it resulted in the deaths of 11 to 13 people. I mean, possibly even more when it was all said and done. I mean, we probably would never know the actual number, but I say that because the historical marker, it mentions 11 black people were killed. And some historical accounts, they state that 13 black people were killed and other historical reports. They state that there was a much higher number of black people killed during this lynching rampage. But like I said, we probably would never know the full truth or the actual number of people that were actually killed. But let's keep moving. Now, among the people that were killed were people that were already locked within the local jail. And Hazel Hayes Turner, Mary's husband, was also lynched. Johnson, the one who was said to have confessed to the killing of Smith, he was also said to have been killed during a shootout with the police, according to the reports as well. Now, before we get to what happened to Mary, I want to discuss the events that actually led up to it and, you know, everything that happened. Now, Mary's husband, Hayes, he was accused of being an accomplice in Smith's killing, and this is why he was lynched, supposedly. But Mary, she insisted that he was not involved and she spoke out publicly against her husband's lynching. Now, Mary, she even threatened to take legal action against the white mob that had lynched her husband or the white mob that was responsible for her husband's death. And Mary, at the current time, she was eight months pregnant. Now, the reports, they differ when it comes to her age. Some say she was 19. Some say she was 20. Some say she was 21. Heck, the new marker says she was 33. So her age is still a mystery. But I'm inclined to believe that she was around 19 because many of the reports state that she was born around December of 1899. And the event here was said to have taken place in 1918. But you all tell me what you all think or what you all know in the comments below. Um, just go ahead and drop it down there, but let's get on back to the story. Now, after Mary spoke out publicly and said, you know, that she was against what happened to her husband, this of course added fuel to the fire and enraged the mob and they turned on her at this time and they were determined to, and I quote, teach her a lesson. Now, when Mary heard of the mob's plan, she fled. But unfortunately, she was caught the following day. And on May the 19th of 1918, 
19-year-old, eight-month pregnant Mary Turner was lynched by a white mob from Brooks County at Folsom's Bridge, 16 miles north of Valdosta. She was lynched for speaking out against the lynching of her husband. Now, Mary was bound by her feet and hung upside down from a tree. Gasoline and oil was thrown on her and she was set on fire. Now, her clothing, they were burned off of her body. And while she was still alive, her baby was cut from her womb with a large butcher's knife. And the baby, once it hit the ground, it was stomped to death by the mob. And Mary's body was also filled with hundreds of bullets by the mob as well. Now, it's very sad and horrible and really bone chilling what happened to them. Oh, but let's keep on moving. Now, during the mob's rampage, more than 500 African-Americans fled from Brooks County. I'm sorry, from Brooks and Lowndes counties in fear of their lives. I mean, why wouldn't they? All of this was going on. Of course they did. And according to the reports, the local authorities, they were given the names of instigators and 15 specific participants in the lynchings. But of course, no one was ever charged or convicted for the murders and nothing was ever done. And it's a shame how people were and pretty much still are treated to this day. And according to the reports, 594 racial terror lynchings occurred between 1877 and 1950 in the state of Georgia and Brooks County. And Brooks County had the third highest number of documented racial terror lynchings during this period. Now, there is currently or there was a historical marker dedicated to Mary Turner and the lynchings that was placed near the lynching site on May the 15th of 2010. But unfortunately, of course, the marker, it had been moved due to vandalism such as bullet holes and attempts to break the marker from the post. I mean, they really vandalized this marker. And as of April the 25th of 2021, there were plans to move the marker to a safer home as an exhibit in the Center for Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta, Georgia. Now, this was according to the coordinator of the Mary Turner Project. However, I couldn't find any update stating that the original marker is within an exhibit. Now, I'm not perfect and could have missed it or overlooked it. And if that's the case, you all, please let me know in the comments below. Please drop a link or something and let us know if you found the original marker. Now, I was able to find the new marker pretty easily. Now, the new marker is located in Hayhira, Georgia. Now, it was moved, you know, to prevent the vandalism and all of that. That's what they were saying. But, um, of course, it's a completely new marker. Now, it's it was placed there in 2021. And the new marker, it now states that Mary was 33 when the lynching occurred. So now I'm more curious and have more questions than before I even began this story. So I'm definitely thinking there may be a part two to this story because I'm definitely going to keep digging. And, of course, that brings us, us to the end of today's chat. Um, but we're left today with so many unanswered questions. But I want you all to tell me what you all think. Do you think that Mary's husband has something to do with Smith's killing? Do you think that more than 13 people were lynched? I mean, how old do you think that Mary was? And where do you think the original marker is today? Now, if you already know, please let us know. Please like the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I mean, we're still on that climb to a thousand subscribers. I mean, if you would like to support the channel, the information to support will be in the description of this video below. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.